Hello, welcome back to my channel, and today I'm going to be making an 18th century Halloween costume for my dog. Yes, I am serious. Now, I do not know very much about 18th century fashion, but I've done a little bit of research, and this is just a Halloween costume for a dog, so it's gonna be fun. So I just popped over to the thrift store and got this hunk of fabric, which as per usual is actually a sheet or um, a sheet and a bed skirt or something. Whatever the case, there's a lot of this fabric and there's an adorable little ruffle on the bottom. Super quickly, I just want to show you this other thing that I found at the thrift store. It's this super adorable vintage hat that's actually from Disneyland. You can see the little vintage tag in there. This pink ribbon has little Mickey faces all over it and I'm super excited to wear it, but that's totally aside from the point. This fabric is what I'm going to be using to make the base of the dress. Then I have some other little things, like some random cream fabric that I've had for a while. This project is going to hardly resemble anything historically accurate, partly because I don't know much about 18th century fashion, and partly because this is a dress for a dog. So without further ado, I'm going to start planning what this costume is going to look like, and then we can start making it. Here is an approximate sketch of my doggy Mabel. I've started drawing a little bit of the costume. This is going to be quite tricky because dogs' bodies are very different than humans' bodies. So figuring out the pattern pieces is going to be quite challenging, but let's just get into the design and I'll figure out the rest later. For the sake of research and reference, I have chosen the 1780s as my decade. I'm gonna have a little ruffle peeking through the hem to sort of reference the idea that there's a chemise underneath, even though she's a dog and she obviously will not be wearing a chemise. The bottom of the skirt is open so that Lady Mabel can do her business. Now I'm going to put a sort of straight neckline here. And then I'm going to attach the sleeves, which will be sort of the half length sleeves. Then I also might put a little bit of that chemise ruffle around the neckline. And then of course I'm going to make a little fichu, the sort of sheer fabric that would cover the sort of decolletage area. And then I think I'm going to try making a little bonnet and I'll probably attach that with some little elastics going around each of her ears. So the bonnet will probably be a thing that's more just for pictures because getting her to keep it on is probably going to be quite a challenge. And I'll just sort of draw that little ditzy floral pattern. So I suppose let's get making this 18th century dog costume. After taking Mabel's measurements, I started with the drafting. I had to keep in mind that it still needed to be big enough and loose enough that she could still move around and lie down and everything. 18th century fashion was known for being incredibly tight, so that may take a little bit away from the 18th century look, but she'll still look adorable. It's an adorable dress on an adorable dog, so where can you go wrong, really? I've cut out my pattern pieces and I'll try to explain to you sort of how they're gonna fit together. There are two pieces, like this, so... This is the way they'll go. They'll be sewn together along here and along this curve on the bottom. And this curve on the bottom will be the part that goes under her chest. And then this little curve here is where the sleeve is gonna go. And then the skirt will be put right here and this little piece will go underneath her stomach. And then I have just a rectangle for the skirt piece that will be pleated into the waist. Then the sleeves are pretty much normal sleeves like you would do on a dress for a person, only slightly different proportions. So these will be sewn together like that. And then this part will be attached to the shoulder. And then I'll probably have to fit the sleeves to her a little better and get rid of a little of the excess over here. I'm actually gonna do a little of that now because I know that these are gonna be too big for her. I'm probably not gonna be doing a lot of interior finishing on this because it is just a dog costume. It doesn't really need to last very long. So I'm probably just gonna leave the seams raw edges. So I'm gonna get sewing. Here is the main structure, the bodice of the dress. Looks a little funky when it's not on anything. I forgot to mention I put this triangle in the front also to make it wide enough for the front of her chest. The only thing right now is that the chest is a little bit tight on her so I'm gonna add a little strip of fabric to make it bigger. And then as I suspected the sleeves are quite baggy but I think what I'm actually gonna do is just tie a ribbon around it when it's on her and that'll look really adorable. And once I've done those things I can attach the skirt and do some finishing like just the hemming around the neckline and the sleeves and then eventually on the skirt. So I'm gonna add a little strip to the opening and then I'll get back to you. 
Not while Britannia rules the waves. Not likely. While we have decks upon the sea. And it is another day, and now that I have the base of my doggy dress, I'm going to start adding a few more details. I have this long strip of cream fabric that I'm going to use to make a ruffle coming out from under the skirt, and I'll probably also use a little bit of that on the neckline. Then after that, all there is left to do is to figure out the closure. I might do that with buttons, as I do for a lot of things, but it might be easier to just do hooks and eyes or maybe snaps if I have any floating around in my sewing stash. Then I'll see what other decorative things I have. I'll maybe put a bow on the front or something. Then we'll just have to make the bonnet, which I'll probably do by just cutting out a circle of fabric, hemming it, and kind of gathering it around the edges. And then the whole costume will pretty much be complete. So let's get sewing on some ruffles. After the dress was finished, I made a bonnet by cutting out a white circle of fabric, hemming around it, and gathering around the edge. Ooh. Um, well, I snapped my thread, isn't that just so very convenient? Oh, let's try this again. Let's double the thread this time so that I don't do that again. Now I have the bonnet, and the only thing left that I'm going to make is a fichu, which is sort of the silk scarf that would be used to cover the neckline. So I have this piece of sheer pinkish fabric, so I'm just going to hem this, and then we can put it all together and see how it looks on Mabel. So that's the end of the making of this 18th century doggy costume. Do you like your costume, Mabel? Does it make you feel beautiful? This was quite a random and unusual project, but it was very fun and I think that she looks adorable in the dress. My sewing precision on this project was not quite as neat as I usually would do on a project that I'm gonna wear, but because this is something that Mabel is only gonna be wearing like once more on Halloween. I didn't really think it mattered for it to have super duper nicely done stitches and all that stuff. At the time of filming this, Halloween is only in one week, which I don't even know how that happened so fast. Let me know in the comments what you're gonna be for Halloween and if you have a pet, are you dressing them up? Real quick, before I finish off the video, I'd like to mention that I have an Etsy shop called Gwen's Vintage Box, where I'm selling vintage and antique curated boxes themed after different colors. The link will be in the description if you wanna check it out. And that would be it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please comment, rate, subscribe, and all that jazz, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye. <laughs> then after the, <laughs> Oh darn, you're taking a dog right now dog right now, which means I can't measure her, which means I can't start making the costume. <laughs>